Smart React 4.0 beta is now available. And in this video, we're gonna go over every single update. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. The biggest change of this release is definitely in the UI. And the best way to see it is by me showing you the before and after. So let me show you what Smart Rack 3.4 used to look like. This is Smart Rack 3.4. A lot of you are very familiar with it. It does have different tabs. So if you wanted to go to something like fill, you would click here on the drop down menu and pick where you need to go. Again, that was one too many clicks. It doesn't really have a run button. To run Smart Rack, you had to click on any of these buttons. It was a bit confusing, especially to new users. So I definitely want to stay consistent with all the other tools where we have like a top shelf here, a run button, and then we have these icon driven tabs. So when you click on something like anchor, you'll see like all the anchor point options and stuff like that. So I definitely took this and here's what the new Smart Rec 4.0 beta looks like. And as you can see, it's very similar to Smart Animator. Right away, we have a run button, which is very important. We have presets, very similar to Smart Animator again. We'll talk about that. And then we also have these icon tabs. And it's much quicker to navigate around. So if you want to go and maybe adjust margin, you would click on this margin tab. And just like that, it will go to margin. So each icon, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. So this one right here is size. You can click on it and you can see size options. You can go to naming options right here, preferences, color, roundness. Anchor buttons have multiple uses. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you navigate over to the anchor tab right here, you'll see these anchor buttons, but you also see a new button called move anchor. So it has two uses. Essentially it becomes a selection tool. And here's what I mean by that. So if you go over to the Smart Rack 3.4, this is what it used to look like. And to run Smart Rack, you had to click on one of these buttons. So if you want to create a Smart Rack with an anchor point at the bottom right corner, you would click on that. It would create a new Smart Rack with an anchor point located in the bottom right corner. So it was just a one click. But now since we have a run button, this becomes a selection tool. So to create a Smart Rack with an anchor point at the top right corner. You would just select the top right corner like this. And then to run it, you would just run it. And just like that, it creates a new rectangle with anchor point located in the top right corner. So that's the first use. Basically, it's a selection tool, but then it also is like a layer anchor tool as well. So you can select a layer or multiple layers. Right now, the anchor point is located in the center of each layer. I can tell the anchor to move to the top right corner by selecting top right and then clicking on move and just like that. However, the reason why I created this is for this. So right now, this is a smart rect shape. And if you navigate over to the pseudo effect, you'll see all these controls that you can adjust. Now you can adjust the anchor point of this. In here, we have anchor point, but watch what happens. So when you do this and you set it to top left corner, as you can see, it does go to top left corner, but it doesn't adjust the layer position. So that can be a problem. So that's why I created this tool right here. So you can say, go to top left corner, select this and then move. And just like that, it will move it. But not only will it move the anchor point, but it will also adjust the position to where it doesn't move. New custom size options were added to the script UI. And let me show you what I'm talking about. If you navigate over to size tab right here, you'll see we have two modes. We have custom size mode and we have layer size mode. Let's talk about custom size mode first. So when you click on it right away, you'll see the width and the height. And essentially you can type custom values in here for the width, maybe something like 300 on the width and maybe 100 on the height. And if you don't have anything selected in your composition, if you run this, it will create this shape 300 by 100 in the middle of your composition. And you can keep going here. You can adjust, do whatever you want with it. That's custom size options. And if you do have layers selected and if you do run the script, notice it'll create the same shape for each selected layer. Then we have layer size. Now, layer size has one option here, auto resize. And right now it's set to off. And when you select your layers and when you run this, it will create a shape for each selected layer that is the same size as your layer. However, if you change the name of this, notice the shape doesn't change, which in some cases that's what you want, but in other cases you might want it to be responsive. And for that, here's what you need to do. I'm gonna undo, we're gonna select everything again. We're gonna go to Smart Rect. And this time we're gonna go to Layer Size and we're gonna click on Auto Resize. When you click on it, it will switch from off to on, which means that now it's enabled. When you run this, it will create the same shape, but this time when you type something like one, two, three, four, 
and so on, you'll see that the shape will automatically resize. Roundness tab was added to the script UI. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you navigate over to the roundness icon, you can hover over it. It tells you it's roundness. When you click on it, it'll show you the roundness options. So in here, you can select multiple layers. So you can adjust your roundness option to maybe something like 30, either pixels or percentage. I'm going to set it to pixel. And when you run it, it will set roundness for multiple shape layers. Size at time tab has been added to the script UI. And let me show you what it does. If you navigate over to this clock icon, when you click on it, you'll see these size at time options. Now let me quickly explain what they are. By default, it's set to current time. Now this works with layer size. So anytime you want to grab the size of a layer to create a shape layer that's the same size as your selected layer, you also want to reference where you want to grab the size from. Because remember, we have a layer size, width and height, but we also have a timeline and the timeline can change your size. So for example, at this current time, that's the size of the selected layer. Now at the beginning here, the size of the selected layer is completely different. So by default, it's set to current time, which means current time indicator. So if I create a shape layer based on current time of the selected layer, that's what it will give me this. It's because it's set to current time by default. However, there are times when you want to reference current selected layer somewhere else. So maybe I want to grab the size of it based on the in point of the layer. So that's where you would click on in or maybe the middle point or the out point or even custom size. You can say custom size and you can type in maybe like two second mark, or you can go to this four second mark and pull in like this. It'll give you four. So that's what it's for. New naming options were added to the script UI. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's navigate over to the naming tab. We have two things in here. We have the name of our new shape layer that we're going to create. And we also have some buttons in here. So let's name our shape layer something like one, two, three, and we can do more to it. Notice right now everything's lower case, so I can make everything title case by clicking on this title case button. And just like that, everything changed. I can make it everything uppercase by clicking on this button here or lower case by clicking on that button. Or I can do this. I can actually grab the name of any of my selected layers. So maybe like this layer right here, layer three, I can grab the name of it and pull it into here by clicking on this get layer name button. So when you click on it, it will pull it in here. And again, you can adjust things. You can make it uppercase, lowercase, title case. And when you are ready, you can create a new shape and it will label it the same way as you see it in here. I've also installed a new preference tab that lives right here. When you click on this icon, it'll take you here. And that's where you can activate features like masking, or parenting, you can disable them. It's the same features that you saw in the previous version of SmartRec. You saw them in here, and they are now located in preferences. Global and local reset buttons were added to the script UI, and they live right in here. So we have global and local. And let me explain what that means. So for example, if you are in a tab like roundness, and you made an adjustment, and you want to reset this to default. So default will be zero and pixel in this case. So to reset it, just click on reset. It will go to default. Now it is set to local, which means that the reset will only happen in the tab that you're currently in. Now, when you switch it to global and you hit reset, it will reset all the other ones. Layout presets were also added to SmartRect, similar to what we had in Smart Animator. So these presets we also have in SmartRect. And the way it works is very simple. Number zero is the default. So these have to do with the layout. So right now, by default, uh, we have like margin set to zero and everything, but maybe each time you open it up, you want to have a different value. So maybe like roundness, you always want to start out with maybe like 20 pixels. Well, you can set whatever changes you make. Maybe like you don't want the orange color. You want it to be a different color, like maybe pink. And so we have a pink color. We have a roundness here. Well, I want to set all of these changes into a preset. And zero is the default. Default meaning when you open it up, that's what you're going to see. So I can select this. And we have three buttons. We can either reset it to factory default, or we can take this value and set it for whatever preset is selected. So I'm going to push all of this into zero by clicking on set. And just like that, round is going to be 20, color is going to be that. So if I change it to any color I want, if I reset it to default, notice it's going to go back to pink. So that sets it. Now I can also assign them to different presets. Maybe this one right here can be like 100% and I can attach it to five, I can set it. And so now I can go to default, pull it in. So this is pulls things in. That's what default sees it. Now five one, let's pull that in. That's gonna be a hundred. So you can have different presets going and you can always reset them to factory default by clicking on this reset. 
the Elite Smart Rag button has been added to the Script UI, and it does more than just gets rid of Smart Rag, but it also resets it back to the original After Effects shape layer. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, I'm gonna create a new Smart Rag the size of this layer right here. So I'm gonna to go to Size option here. So I'm gonna set it to Layer Size. We're gonna to go to Margin, maybe have some margin for the left and right. So do something like 40 pixels on both, and maybe for up and down, we're gonna do 20 pixels. Or let's do roundness, maybe like 35. That's good. And color, I'm gonna set it to pink. So now we made all these options. I'm gonna run this. So it created a nice little shape here. But what if I wanted to get rid of the smart rect, like the controls here, and maybe the expressions and stuff like that? Well, you can do that with this button here. So when you click on it, it gets rid of it, you know, it gets rid of the pseudo effects and all the other options. But not only that, it basically creates an original After Effects shape layer, similar to what you would do when you create a new shape layer. As you can see, we have the same options as you see here. New text height options were added in this release, and a lot of you have been requesting this, so let me show you what it does. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna select this text layer right here. We're gonna go to Smart Rect. We're gonna navigate over to Size tab, and we're gonna enable Auto Resize. So once that's on, I'm gonna run the script, and basically creates a shape layer that's the same size as our select the text layer. I'm going to select the shape layer and go to the effect controls panel. And in here we have a new option, text height. So we have a drop down menu. So by default, it's set to full height. And just like that, it gives us full height. But then we can change it to ignore descenders. And just like that, it will ignore any descenders that you have. And you can keep typing because this is responsive. So you can keep typing. It will always ignore descenders, which is super handy. And then I'm going to select the shape layer again. We're going to go back to text height. And this time I'm going to change it to X height which is the height between the top here and here, basically the X height. And just like that, it will set it to X height. Doesn't matter what you type, and it will always keep it at X height. In this version of SmartRect, I've added a feature to where SmartRect shape will automatically inherit the size and position of parent layer. And this will solve a lot of issues. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, I have this text layer, and I'm gonna go to SmartRect, and I'm gonna enable auto resize. We're gonna create a new shape. Here's what it looks like, and if I change the text, it will basically go with it. Now, watch this. Before, you couldn't do this. You couldn't select both of these and duplicate. And I'm going to position them at the top. When you move them like this, it would basically break the whole thing. And you couldn't do this. You couldn't change this one or that one. So now it automatically links, which is super powerful. But here's another thing. So let's do this. I'm going to select this shape right here and delete it. And now I'm going to select this shape right here. This shape right now, this one right here, is parented to this text layer. And because of that, it inherits the position and the size of that layer. Now, if I change this to that text layer right here, it will automatically move it over there and it will also inherit the size of it. And not only that, it is auto resizable, so you can change it and it will always resize itself. Separate rounded corners feature is not available in this release. It's something I'm currently working on and hopefully one day it will make it into SmartRect. But as of today, it's, it's not available, but I still wanna show it to you. So this is SmartRect of the future, right? This is in the future. So we have small rect here and we have roundness value and profile. So I can make it the same way, make all the corners rounded, but then I can adjust profile. I can make it flat and so on. So that's gonna be available in the future. But not only that, we can also separate the roundness of each corner. So we can go over here, we can say separate roundness and we can adjust it individually like this. So that's something we're gonna be able to do. And again, you can do that for all of them. You can do all kinds of things. You can set it based on percentage or pixel, and you can adjust that all day long. So that's going to be good. And you can also do separate profile. You can say maybe this one could be flat, that one could be flat. Here's another feature that I'm currently working on that will not be available in this release, but hopefully in the near future. And that is the installers. It's something a lot of you have been requesting for some time now, and we're definitely working on that. And soon you'll be able to install all of our tools with few clicks. Let me show you how easy it is. So you just double click here and just like that with few clicks, you can install it and then you're done. All right. Well, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching it. And thank you to thousands of you that use our tools on a daily basis. That means the world to us. We appreciate your support. And as always, all of our upgrades are always free. So if you want to get SmartRect 4.0 beta and you have already purchased it in the past, then you can just go to ukramedia.com, re-log in, re-download, and you can use it anytime. So thank you. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.